This is Tennessee Talks with United States Congressman Tim Burchett. Hey folks, I'm Congressman Tim Burchett and welcome back to another episode of Tennessee Talks. It just keeps getting bigger and better. And today I'm joined with Tom, by Tom Basile, who hosts America Right Now on Newsmax and is also a columnist for the Washington Times. He's written two books, Tough Sell, Fighting the Media War in Iraq in 2017, and Let It Sink In, The Decade of Obama and Trump in 2020. He spent 20 years in communications in the political sphere, and he recently made the excellent decision to become an East Tennessean. I appreciate that. Don't leave me hanging. Thank you. All right. Tom, thank you for being here today, brother. I, um, I'm going to ask you a few questions, and um, and we just keep this kind of casual. This is good. this is a little bit of a switch, because I'm usually was, asking you questions. I was going to say, that's, on, that's the difference. Newsmax. So, <laughs> so I'm going to drill him, folks. That's all there's to All right, no, all right. No, I'm no, ready. No, I'm ready. No. no. <laughs> but of course, when it comes to the media, you've done it all. You've done TV, radio. I like to say I have the perfect place for radio. Um, articles, books, you name it. What's been your favorite job that you've done and, and why is that? Well, you know, I started my career in, in public service. So I started my career in government. I've worked at the local, state, right. and federal levels. So I view this, unlike a lot of other journalists, a lot of other people in the media, I, I view this as an extension of my public service. So I, I do see it that way. Um, and for me uh, to be able to reach the number of people that I reach um, on television a a every week and uh, with the with the specials and the series that I do, uh, you know, this has really been the most fun because it was also pretty unexpected. I um, I had a longstanding relationship with Sirius XM Radio. I used to host yep. Sunday in America, which was their, their, um, uh, their political uh, talk program on Sunday, uh, and then did a, did a lot of radio work and I uh, really didn't think that I was going to end up on television at all. So, uh, you know, kind of at this stage in my career to be able to uh, to learn an entirely new skill and to try to, you know, to embrace TV has really, it's it's been, it has been a lot of fun. And over the last few years between the 2020 election, um, this election cycle, the pandemic, uh, to uh, to be able to have the opportunity to speak to folks all across the country, um, and, uh, and and in a way that respects their intelligence, which is something that we also don't really uh, we don't hear a lot about in the media. Uh, it's and there's a lot of talking down to folks. Uh, and, exactly, uh, and and I believe and that. And who are you to question us? <laughs> mentality, which to me is a little crazy. Oh, absolutely. And and look, this is about having a a, a robust national conversation about what makes America great, um, how we maintain our strength and our vitality and our freedoms as, as, as Americans. And so uh, I have to say, I know that it's, I, I'm not kissing up to my bosses at Newsmax, but, um, but this has really been the most fun that I've had. Good. Well, uh, every time I'm on Newsmax, it's, it's, an, it's funny how a different crowd of folks will will text me sometimes when I'm on the air. Hey, man, you're on television. Of course, I'm filming with my phone. <laughs> and I've, I've had, found out my daughter showed me how to, that, that I can stop the calls and so that it doesn't <laughs> pop up on the screen and then they lose my beautiful face. But, um, and, and of course, that leads me into the next question, social media. Yeah. Um, I, it, I wonder how that has changed your landscape and the landscape of, uh, of our culture. I, and, and I know that... Um, uh, you know, newsprint, it's just going away. And they always say, well, it's because of social media. And I'm not so sure it's that, or is it the fact that social, that a lot of newsprint, say for instance, the Knoxville News Sentinel, it's not written in Knoxville. It's written out of Nashville. And it's, um, right. I remember I, I, there was something on their website a while back about a, a, a girls volleyball team. Okay, in Nashville. Not in Knoxville. Right. It's the Knoxville News Sentinel, yeah. and and you know I just think that they've um, uh, they uh, um, they say well we're not able to compete with social media. Well, you're not able to compete with social media because you're not you're not changing with the times. Yeah. Well, they're not providing people relevant information, and but this is also part of the you know we talk a lot about yeah. the left's advance in America, particularly the far left, right? And one of the one of the consequences of um, us sort of abdicating Jeffersonian democracy in this country is it's it's also sort of translated to media, right? Um, the the. the 
the left wants a very kind of top-down sort of command and control approach right. to how our lives are run. Well, the media is now a reflection of that. Why? Because we're spending so much less time focused on our backyard. We're worrying about, you know, well, what's the dumb thing that Kamala Harris said this week about, you know, buses or choo-choo trains or space or whatever the heck it is. Yeah. They, they want to take up our mind share with stuff that's going on in Washington. And frankly, they want us to ignore what's happening in our cities, in our towns, in our school districts. And so when you look at how the, the, the top-down approach to media has sort of buttressed the bottom-up approach of the, of the left in right. America and in our institutions, it makes a lot of sense, right? Um, sense. You know, with respect to social media, the biggest problem that we have is this, this collusion between the government and the social media companies. And we're hearing about this just this morning again, right? A new disinformation board yeah. at the Department of Homeland Security going to monitor our conversations. I mean, we are, we are at this point in time with the almost symbiotic relationship that formed yeah. Uh, during the pandemic between government and these big tech companies, we are, don't think that the social credit system, the social credit scoring system that they have in China is really that far-fetched uh, because you're seeing it. Yeah. And, um, and that's the thing that, that really, when you talk about that, um, that and you chilling free speech, chilling political activism, uh, and, uh, and the DOJ and Department <clears throat> of Homeland Security getting involved. I mean, this should scare all of us. That is a very chilling, I always used to say, you know, we'd say, well, we're going to, when I was in the state legislature, we had legislation dealing with them. Uh, yeah, you were, you were to be counseled by a, a minister before you got married, and you could you wouldn't have to. It would reduce your your fees. And I said, well, that's okay if it's my preacher, but if it's your preacher, I'm not so sure. <laughs> and my point was, when we're in charge, it's going to be a different group. When they're in charge, and that's why freedom of speech is freedom of speech. Yeah. It's not. It, it is not regulated. Um, and that leads to the next question. I had a, a good segue, as you would say, in the media. I like that's a big word for me to be using. Um, <laughs> The, uh, the media has changed the way, of course, it covers politics yeah. and such as campaigns and legislative issues. And I'm wondering how, that, how you've seen that change, uh, because it seems to me that, uh, you know, y'all get on stuff. It's not every week. You know, when I was a young political prodigy, you know, we, we'd, we'd talk to the press and, and we'd, we'd just wait, you know, a week, a month or whatever for this story to break. You mm. know, but now it's just, you know, it's instantaneous. Yeah, the, the news cycle is so short. And um, and again, it, it also the danger to that is that you know really the really important stuff sometimes gets uh, it gets in and out really really quickly, and we don't end up having an actual robust discussion about any, any particular issue. So I think the biggest thing that I've seen, other than it being you know, a small number of conglomerates, a small number of very wealthy, well-heeled, um, and definitely left of center um, corporate, um, you know, corporate interests controlling a massive amount of the information that Americans get is there's, there's that there's that coordination with with government, which in the past it was has never been at this level before. Um, and, and it is ignoring our backyard uh, and, uh, you know, and, and not appreciating uh, what's, what's happening in your cities and, and towns and school districts and glossing over all of that. Oh, and that's a real problem because, uh, you know, when I tell folks all the time, and I was a local elected official, um, and, and you're you know, covered. And I, re and I recovered, I, sur I survived. <laughs> um, and I've been a party official and I managed yeah. to survive. I don't know how I survived that. I've been a local elected That's official. That's the only race I've, I've lost uh, that I'm glad I actually you, lost. Yeah. <laughs> I did not want to be a, a chairman of the Knox County Republican. <laughs> yeah, you, you're, and you're, you're a better man for it, I'm sure. Um, but it's that you really have to pay attention to what's happening in your backyard. We're seeing it in, in Knox County with, with development, right? Oh yeah. Um, these are the types of 
conversations, you know, should you be building three houses on an acre uh, or not? Uh, you know, how do you create a master plan? That's what's going to impact your quality of life and your cost of living, yeah. probably more than anything that Joe Biden is going to do to you over the next, you know, two years uh, or you know, by yeah. extension, Bernie Sanders, whoever's actually in control. We don't really know at this point. So, um, so I that, theory about that, but that's for another show. <laughs> I was going to say, you come when, on my show. We'll yeah. talk about that. When you talked about, um, about, you know, our attention span, I always say America wants their pizzas in 30 minutes or less. And that's about our attention span. Yeah. yeah. It just moves to the next. It's so fast. And if you're not willing to, um, adapt, you get run over. Yeah. You know, you'd always, you would, you, somebody would accuse you of something, then you would, you would answer it. And then, you know, vice versa, vice versa. You get caught in that. I mean, you're three days behind, mm -hmm. you know, you just, yeah, you just ignore most of the, the yeah. criticism because it's just, it's usually unfounded, first of all. And then second, it's just, nobody's paying attention into it anyway. And if you, you draw attention to it, then that, that, that stops it. And then people are, are talking about it. Well, and, and that's why message discipline is so important. Um, and I, you know, I always, when, when, and people do still call me, uh, you know, for advice and, sure. and I, and, and, and I, I'm, I'm always willing to give people advice on this. I've, I've taught about political communications at the graduate level and I've, I've, uh, I've, uh, I've been in strategic communications and public affairs for, for 25 years. Right. And, and I always tell folks, do not swing at the pitches in the dirt. Okay, and, and that's more important now than ever because they have the ability to come at you in so many different ways. Stay focused on your mission. Yeah. Um, and this was kind of in, you know, our, our, our former president sometimes would, 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 would swing it at, at every pitch that was thrown at him. And yes, he had some home runs, but he also struck out a lot. Struck out, yeah. And, and that's, uh, you know, you just got to be careful about that in sure. this environment. And I know you worked in the Bush administration mm -hmm. and um, what is some differences would you say that the, the Biden administration and maybe the Bush administration or even the Trump administration or how they communicate with the American people? I, cool. I, I'm very frustrated a lot of times because I think sometimes answers can be given and it just looks like a Saturday Night Live skit and I haven't watched Saturday Night Live in years, but I suspect, you know, there's a, there's a thing where somebody's asking a question and the press secretary's just turning pages back and forth, back and forth. and given out some crazy answer that just, and that they could have been answered. Take it head on, say, yeah, we messed up. Or in fact, we're working on this and this is how we're doing. Yeah, I, I think the, the level of spin is definitely increased. The level of honesty has decreased. Um, but you, you didn't have social media. When I was in Iraq, for instance, okay, right. and we were working, and I was at the Pentagon, and we were working on the global war on terrorism communication strategy and everything else, we didn't have social media pounding us, but we got pounded, you know, George Bush, he got pounded every day. Right. You, you didn't, he didn't get away with anything. Joe Biden gets out there and says there are 54 states, says that he passed his, his student loan welfare bailout, whatever you want to call it, thing that through Congress, total, total, fa yeah. total fabrication. He gave the price of fuel and it was just, it was totally wrong and just, um, Oh, and, and they continue to say that the that the that the Trump tax cuts only benefited the wealthy. It's a flat out lie. Seventy percent plus of Americans received a tax cut during the Trump administration. So the fact is, is that they 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 are um, they will gloss over things that in a Republican administration you'd never get away with. You'd get hounded over it for days. Um, the Hunter Biden story, for instance, is, yeah. is one that you know continues to frustrate me um, because you had government agencies, you had social media involved in all of this, and actively trying to depress the story, and a story that we know would have had an enormous impact on voter intent in 2020. It would have, it would have swayed, it would have swayed votes, I, I feel like, just yeah. that level of corruption. And the, poll, the polling data yeah. uh, has all shown that. I mean, yeah. it would have swayed enough votes to tip, to tip the election. And that's where you had federal agencies involved with social media and, mm -hmm. um, and I feel like, you know, it's, it's interesting that that's the very thing that Hillary Clinton accused the Republicans of doing in collusion with the Russians. And it just, you know, it's just, uh, um, or there's an old saying about accuse somebody of doing what you're doing. Yeah. And that seems to be the case. Well, Congressman, we're seeing. You can call me Tim. Um, Congressman, some 85-year-old guy. You <laughs> 
<laughs> historically and statistically. But you, you, but you've earned it, sir. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm going to call you Congressman. Um, look, uh, you, you know, and and this kind of goes to what I think is the big constitutional crisis that we have right now, and and this has been developing over five decades, and it's the fault of Republicans and Democrats. All right, we have an executive branch of government that has a size and a scope and an authority independent of the other co-equal branches of government that is unlike anything that our founders had ever dreamed of. Ambitions, you're right. And, and it is totally run amok. I've served in the federal government. When people try to tell me that the deep state doesn't exist, um, you know, I've seen it. I've seen it happen. I've seen it operate. I if you do. think that the deep state doesn't exist, How does I'm going to introduce you to a guy named Anthony Fauci, okay? Yeah. How, uh, how does one member of Congress make 76% Consistently on their taxes. I mean, on their not the uh, taxes. Other investments, investment. right? That 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 tells you there's something existing there. You're exactly right. Yeah. 100. Um, percent Outside of incredible congressional representation, I'm wondering what encouraged you to <laughs> run to, move to East Tennessee. Well, I said um, run to East Tennessee, but I guess move to Tennessee. East Tennessee. Uh, it, it was kind of run. Uh, well, look, uh, you know, uh, and I've been very public about this uh, during the pandemic. Um, we saw uh, the way that New York State's government, which is totally controlled by Democrats, it may not be, which is interesting, um, in a couple Lee of weeks, Zeldin, you think Lee has I a chance? think he's got a chance. I think I, he's going to win. I, I really do. I really think he's got. I'm, I'm, I've known Lee for years. I have. I, I've known him since I've been in Congress. Our lockers are right behind each other. Um, we were both. I think he was second string first baseman. I was about fourth or fifth string, and um, <laughs> on the congressional baseball team, and we became very good friends. And I'm a, I'm a fan of Lee Zeldin's. Yeah. I think he is a um, he is what this country needs. I could see him. Uh, you know, I wished that the. Um, the national attention would focus on people like him and, and the qualifications, because as they used to, an old guy named Kaz Walker had a had a newspaper around here called the Watchdog, and he'd said he's clean as a houndstooth, yeah. and Lee Zeldin is clean as a houndstooth. He's a good man too. He's 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 a good guy. Uh, I was executive director of the state Republican Party when he won his seat in in the state legislature. Oh wow, really? And so I've and I've known Lee for many many years. Right. Um, we're seeing a lot of things happening uh, um, on the ground in New York that are going to I think Crimes, give him a really driving issue. Well, it is it is a driving issue, um, but but people are also fed up. I mean, it's the highest combined tax burden in the country, and you've got wow. more and more people who are saying, what am I getting for my dollar? And when it comes to my family, during the pandemic, my wife is a physician. She's an OBGYN. And, um, and I've been, we've been very public about this. Uh, the state of New York outlawed, outlawed religious exemptions to the vaccine for healthcare workers, even though every healthcare worker that goes into every hospital has to take precautions. Sure. Um, and even though we knew, you know, probably mid 2021 that they were lying to us about the vaccine, that it doesn't prevent transmission or infection, the state of New York said, you cannot have a religious view or a personal view about this vaccine. It, you will lose your job. And so my wife lost her, lost her job. And uh, we got a, she had a wonderful opportunity in Eastern Tennessee at, the, uh, at uh, one of the medical schools. And it was difficult. Um, it was difficult, uh, Congressman, uh, you know, and whenever you, you run into somebody who's a refugee, um, who's somebody who's, who's had to make that painful choice to leave where they're from, it is painful and wow. it's very hard to do. Um, but I have to say thank you. I want to say thank you to everybody in, in Eastern Tennessee, uh, all of the folks that we have met, the communities that have welcomed us, um, we and, and our children. We, I've got three young kids yep. and I'm so appreciative of, uh, of, of the welcome, of uh, being, f being made to feel at home, being made to feel like we are valued here, that our values are respected here. I like the fact that you, you know where you came from and you don't want that for here. Yeah. You know, I have a friend that moved here, Elise Stefanik asked me to introduce me, said if you could help him, you know, get integrated or whatever, his name's Michael Biddle, moved from New York mm -hmm. and very active in, in politics. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and you know that that's the thing he told me. He said, "Man, I don't want to change it. I want to keep it just like it is." That's yeah. why I left up there. Yeah, and I would encourage people. You know, when you come across somebody who's a transplant, talk to them, 
And, and, and this goes back to our earlier conversation, Congressman. Outside of the it's, funny accent, you and I pretty much probably share the same values. I, I, absolutely. You know, and, East Tennessee is the only place in America where people don't speak with an accent. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, what I say to folks is, is when, you, when you come across somebody who left, um, who left their home to come here, to make a life here, talk to them. Ask them why. Don't be, don't be shy about asking them why they left. And that's, there's, it's important because we're not immune from the, 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 the policy. We are not immune from the inertia and the forces that have taken states like New York and turned it the wrong way. I mean, we just had that drag show in, in Maryville, right? Um, we've got the scandal with, uh, with the, the sex reassignment surgeries. In, Vanderbilt. To, in, at Vanderbilt. Yeah. Um, so you're not immune. Look at our neighbors in North Carolina. They're seeing that unless you're careful, you could end up being a Democrat-controlled state. Yeah. And, um, and your values will be eroded the way that they were eroded in places like New York and New Jersey and Connecticut. So I, I just, you know, I want to thank everybody because it's been a wonderful experience um, to become a volunteer. Uh, We're glad y'all are here. You know, it's funny. I was, um, I'm in a in a group in in D.C. and we have breakfast once a week. And one of the members, another member from Congress, is from Texas. It's it's a very conservative group, obviously. <laughs> There's about 15 or 20 of us. And they were talking about Beto O'Rourke down in Texas. <laughs> and they were saying how that, you know, when he ran the first time, that he, there, people were saying that it was um, all these people that moved in from California and New York and, and you know, all Delaware, wherever else, down to, down to Texas that, that almost gave him that election. But in fact, it was not. Yep. Those folks, were, that's what they were trying to get away from. And it, they said it was homegrown socialists that actually educated in their public schools and their um, colleges and universities. Yeah. That followed that pursuit. So it's, yeah. um, I think it's a, it's a complete 180 of what, what people think we've been, been taught. And, and, um, and in Texas, Congressman, you know, they basically paved from Dallas to Plano and they didn't grow smartly. Right. So they had this population explosion, high density housing, all of that stuff comes with it some very serious political instability. Sure. And we don't want to make that mistake here I, in Tennessee. I agree. I agree. Um, Tom, this is yeah. the part that I hate the most, not that it's ending, but that I allow you to ask me a question. Is oh, there anything boy. that's on top of your, your mind that you'd like to ask me or, or correct me on, if you, the case may be? Uh, I'd say, you know, when, when, when Governor Bill Lee is done, are you going to run for governor? No, I enjoy, uh, um, I remember Fred Thompson, who was a great U.S. Senator and yes. was a friend of mine. And I remember trying to talk him into running for president. I even had a, I was at a UT football game and I had, I made my own homemade Fred for president uh, sign um, stick or <laughs> button actually and I wore it and he actually signed it and I have it somewhere in my collection. But, um, and Fred said to me, he said, Tim, he says, to be president, you gotta wanna be president. You know, and I, I really don't have any, I pray about things, ask God what to tell me what to do, but, but um, I'm in, I enjoy being in East Tennessee and, um, and I enjoy being in Congress and, and I have a very good, I always tell the Capitol Hill Police, I said, unlike a lot of my colleagues up here, guys, I actually love my family back home and I want to get back <laughs> home to them. And I appreciate y'all. And they laugh, hey, Tim, we love you, you know, whatever, but we have a good time with that. So I'm, I had, at this point, they say never say never, but I'm about as close to saying never. I think there's, there's going to be a big field of people and people out of East Tennessee are going to be running a lot of, all of them, I guess, of the, of the four people that are talking about it. They're all pretty close friends. So, um, and, and I'm, I'll be glad that I have my own election at that time so I can, if I choose again to run for Congress, if I'm still able, but uh, I appreciate that. Yeah. appreciate the consideration. Well, we're very, we're, we're very lucky to have you. Well, thank yeah. you, brother. I appreciate that. And I want to thank you for being here with me today. And I appreciate you bringing your perspective from across the board, from the, the frozen north right down here to good old East Tennessee. <laughs> we dig it. And the media landscape that surrounds our politics. That's a, you have a very interesting perspective that, that we don't often see. And I want to 
Thank you for being on here, brother. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. You know, yeah. I, I fist bump before before COVID, and now everybody's going back going to fist bump, and so I want to be a little avant garde, so I'm going back to handshake. I always thing. I always say conservative shake hands. Yeah, you know, yeah. So, I ain't worried uh, about it. I'm, worried, <laughs> I'm, I'm more worried about the Marxists in Nash and and, and and not Nashville in Washington than I am a, a, a little bit of COVID. I yeah, believe, anyway. I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm All with right. you. Thank you, sir. Hey, I'm Congressman Tim Birch, and I want to thank everybody for joining me today for another episode of Tennessee. He talks and as always thank y'all for sending me here thanks for listening to this episode of tennessee talks please subscribe to the show on apple Podcasts, spotify or wherever you listen to your podcast keep up with congressman burchett by following rep tim burchett on twitter and instagram and congressman tim burchett on facebook and youtube